guys, welcome to Enzymes Q4 community call. It's good to have you all here. Uh, we're going to give it a minute, just let people join uh, the session. So grab a coffee, sit tight, and we'll get started in a second. Um, but while we're waiting, why don't you let us know where you're dialing in from? Uh, drop us a message in the chat with your name and where you're based. It'd be cool to connect uh, with as many people as possible. Cool. And while we wait, guys, we're going to play a quick video for you. This is just kind of an update of uh, who Enzyme is, what we do. Um, some of you may have seen this before, but uh, we may as well watch something while we wait for everyone to join. snazzy marketing video out of the way. I think we've got a few more people in the session now, so we'll get officially cracking. Um, so yeah, my name is Connor. I lead marketing for Avant Garde. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Avant Garde is the core contributor uh, and maintainer of the Enzyme protocol. Um, joining me today, we also have Luca, who heads up business development at Avant Garde. We've got Christopher Chase, who is the founder of HumanDAO and also a newly elected Enzyme user representative. We have David Sutcliffe, who is the founder of Insight3 Capital and also a new uh, user rep. And we have Guillaume joining us, who will update you on the work in progress for the Enzyme referral scheme um, a little bit later in today's call. Uh, we're going to keep this to an hour max. We do have quite a bit to get through, um, so we will try and stick to the timings as best as possible. Uh, we're going to do a brief overview of what Enzyme is. I'm sure many of you are probably familiar with the protocol, but we'll give you some updates um, and just kind of a refresher to kick things off with. Then uh, we will go into network stats, so just looking at kind of how is the protocol performing in terms of, uh, you know, the types of trading strategies that people are, people are running, uh, AUM updates on our Ethereum and Polygon deployments. Uh, then we'll move into Q4 ecosystem news. We've launched some pretty cool new integrations and features for you guys. So we'll definitely spend some time checking that out. Um, tokenomics as well. Everyone loves the tokenomics updates. So we'll look at the latest and greatest in terms of uh, recent burn mechanism that we've introduced and kind of protocol fees and other things like that. And finally, I think Luca will end on the roadmap for Enzyme for 2023, primarily looking kind of shorter term at what we're going to be focusing on uh, in Q1 for next year, but also looking ahead to V5 of Enzyme, which is exciting. And we're going to give you guys a teaser um, of what's to come with that. Um, and finally, if you have any questions at any point during today's session, uh, drop them in the chat. We'll spend some time at the end of the call today. Uh, going through any questions you guys have, so let us know. Um, you can also use the Q&A functionality if you prefer, um, or we'll even open the floor up and you guys could actually ask us questions directly, um, whatever works best for you. Um, I think that's enough housekeeping. We'll kind of do a bit more introductions a bit later on for the new user reps. Um, but for now, I'm going to hand over to Luca, who will give you uh, kind of an overview of Enzyme itself. All right, great. Thanks, Connor. Uh, thank you guys for being here at this uh, community call. 
Um, let's start with a refresher of what Enzyme is and what the uh, value proposition is for, their for the users. Actually, two types of users. If you guys are uh, managers, existing managers, or uh, future potential managers, uh, Enzyme allows you to set up uh, a vault in a matter of minutes. Uh, like the, the vault creation process is pretty streamlined. With our V4, it's a bit more complex, but it's still like ex executable in a, in a few minutes. Uh, you can create an open vault, which, which is accessible to uh, any potential depositor, but it can also be private if you want to have a, a white list and want to, want to know exactly who's depositing in your vault. Uh, once you have uh, you have that set up, um, you can uh, conveniently plug and play with uh, uh, more than 15 integrations. Uh, we will review them in a second. And uh, around 200, uh, 270 assets at the moment uh, uh, on the platform. So you can you have a pretty wide in, uh, um, investable universe at the moment, especially on Ethereum, I would say. Uh, so we'll go back for a second, uh, Connor. Sorry. So then, of course, you can uh, easily monetize your management, your performance. And I'm not sure you're, you're aware, but now we also have a function with, which allows to split fees. Uh, so you can, um, like you, you can design a contract which receives fees and then splits them automatically to different uh, end wallets. Uh, this can be done for management fee, for performance fees, and so forth. So this is very convenient if you have a network or if you want to have like a revenue share with other partners. And of course, as you can see also from the image, um, you can keep uh, your track record, uh, your precious track record as an asset manager under your own uh, URL. So you can white label it, put your logo, your theme, and also um, have it under your uh, website, which makes uh, your investor experience really, um, really your own and, and, and tied to your brand. Um, moving on uh, to the, if you're actually an investor or more like a depositor and simply want to use the expertise of, of some of the existing uh, vault managers, <clears throat> there's actually a list of uh, uh, vaults that are public, so they're, they're open and uh, accessible to anyone. And they have now a pretty proven track record uh, because uh, track record historically goes goes uh, back to January to 2021. So you have vaults that have been uh, through <clears throat> already through a bull market and good part of the bear market. So I think this is uh, uh, gives you a very, a very good sense of the of their management style and their uh, results uh, across different uh, scenarios. Uh, of course, you can keep custody of your own asset, which is uh, very important in the wake of. Uh, what happened with uh, FTX, and um, you have a very transparent strategy. Uh, those managers cannot uh, go degen or go crazy. They actually have you have visibility of what they're doing. Uh, there's no hidden uh, backdoors, no uh, no possibility to take excessive leverage. So you'll see all, uh, everything that they can and cannot do. Um, and also, of course, you have the ability to diversify across. The best asset manager so you can uh, really pick and choose your uh, risk appetite uh, across the community uh, moving on uh, this is like the updated list of all our integrations it's uh, it's really becoming hard to capture them in one single page uh, but yeah like you can you as i always say uh, enzyme is a very fluid concept uh, so, like, the, if you see it today and you look at, uh, back tomorrow, that's there's something new always coming up. And uh, so, with our roadmap, is is pretty. Uh, uh, there's, there's a lot of a lot of stuff in our roadmap. We'll talk about that uh, uh, a bit later. But yeah, there's uh, there's there's a new integrations, and um, the last the la very last one is the one uh, of uh, native staking with Kiln. Uh, but I guess we'll go. There's there's some more slides where we'll talk a bit more in detail about the uh, the new integrations. And um, last but not least, actually, we have two more slides. Um, these are the main, let's say, main use cases for Enzyme uh, uh, users more like in the DAO DeFi realm, and in that case, like the DAO Treasury is the main use case. Uh, of course, like DAOs can custody their vault shares, uh, with a, so they can create a, a vault with a, a multisig, for example, a Gnosis safe or other governor contract. So they keep uh, custody of those uh, of those assets through vault shares. They can customize the permissions, so they can really 
uh, they can use the delegation in a way that uh, you know in a way that uh, they keep a control over the of those those permissions, and they enforce rules by smart contracts. Um, so that's the uh, very important the non custodial aspect and also the trustless delegation. Um, it's also very easy for like uh, for them for those who operate those vaults to access um, both uh, DEXs and yield sources. So you can, uh, if you're like a DAO with a high concentration in native tokens, you can start diversifying. And also after diversification, you can start earning yields on USDC or Ethereum and so forth. And last but not least, you have seven, seven subgraphs underpinning every single vault. So you, you have a very nice, uh, very nice and understandable transparent uh, reporting, which is 24 seven. And as we saw also historically, you can see how, how the, the treasury is performing. Um, and also, by the way, yeah, you can also white label it, and therefore, also for DAOs, you would have the ability to have this under your under your community or your governance page. So you you would have it trans very transparently reported for the whole uh, for the whole uh, organization. Um, second, the second, let's say, area of focus is uh, traditional finance, which is becoming uh, more and more important. We're having more and more conversation with traditional finance players, uh, which is very cool to see. Uh, in general, we see uh, more interest, uh, especially after FTX, we see more and more interest for DeFi, which is very, very cool. And uh, especially traditional finance is starting to move. And we are having conversation uh, with guys that want actually um, create products on chain. Uh, and in this case, we have we can uh, match some of their actually like the most important compliant requirements that they have. For example, KYC processes that they have in place this can be matched on chain with a whitelist uh, so we can we can match that K, those kyc processes with the whitelist of the vault in order to have that uh, correspondence uh, they can uh, vault sorry they can hold those shares uh, that are coming from the, the smart contract on the vault in a segregated custody account which is something like some infrastructure they already have on their side um, and this is also something cool uh, they also require to know who the counterparties are when they swap assets, uh, for example, in an index product. And so we can provide that. Uh, we can provide a DEX experience, so an on-chain decentralized exchange experience with verified count verified counterparts, which are typically uh, market makers. So we would be able to have a compliance end-to-end -end from their side, KYC, and from the, uh, like say, the trading on-chain part, which is also uh, verified. So this is a, a very cool thing for compliant uh, requirements coming from traditional finance. And last but not least, um, we also have the ability to optimize the trade execution uh, by batching transaction. This is something we're working on, uh, which is going to be uh, something that uh, will work. We are work, working towards lowering the slippage for for trades uh, on chain, which is uh, you know which is always uh, a bit problematic for larger trades. And um, also the gas gas fees associated with uh, transactions when they're batched is always uh, much better. So this is uh, for for traditional finance. And I think the next is uh, for yeah the next is some of the specials. Uh, just to recap, this is just a recap uh, since uh, the launch of Sulu V4, which happened in uh, late February, beginning of March. Uh, so as just as a recap, end of year recap, we have. We had the uh, launch of the um, of the other deployment on Polygon, which allowed for a much wider community, uh, especially more retail users, to access uh, affordably uh, our protocol. But also, I would say I would say like many users um, start with Polygon just as a as a test or to get familiar with uh, with uh, our vaults, and then they move on to Ethereum once they they have a full understanding of the functionalities. We have the gas relayer, which allows uh, users to pay or managers to pay um, gas fees through uh, a, a position of Ethereum within the vault, which is obviously much more convenient. Um, we have transferable shares, which, which allow for a potential sec secondary market uh, for those vault shares. But like I said, we have this fee splitter for potential, potential partnerships and uh, sales networks. And we have finally the white label. I guess that was that was the number one request uh, over the year, uh, like of the year, uh, to have a white label, which allows uh, really to have your uh, uh, client or depositor journey end to end uh, on your uh, on your website. So this is like what we have for what we have for this year, and very excited then to talk about some of the things that will come for next year.
Awesome. Thanks, Luca. And we're going to hand over to Chris to walk through network stats. Yep. Here's some updated stats for the network. This is uh, AUM on uh, Ethereum mainnet. It's uh, almost 60 million right now in the protocol on mainnet with 1,200 volts and nearly 3,300 uh, depositors. Moving on to Polygon chain. Now, this is where, you know, I think there's a lot of potential, you know, because Polygon's busy building out their ecosystem and everybody loves the Polygon chain. So I think there's a lot of room for growth here. But uh, as of today, it's almost 600,000 uh, AUM uh, with 750 volts. I think this is going to be a, a, a big, big deal moving forward. Moving on, the trading volume year to date is nearly half a million with most of it taking place in Q2. Um, lots of volatility, lots of movement in price. So, you know, lots of trading going on. And for the strategies that are being used in these vaults, um, most of it is trading. Pools and staking is picking up though, you know, and um, active liquidity management and yield enhancers are growing as well. So it, it'll probably be uh, eating away from just the regular trades, especially in the a bear sideways market. Moving on to the protocol fees. Now from Virgin 4 onwards, this is uh, where, you know, more utility was introduced into the token. Um, so one of the best fundamentals is, you know, to utilize the protocol, you know, paying fees um, and you get a, a, a tremendous discount if paying in the melon token. So here's uh, protocol fees thus far um, uh, for the year or actually since V4 launched. Um, so yeah, this is uh, this is one of those important fundamentals that you know provides utility to the melon token. So yeah, you know even through the the bear market things are still positive uh, as far as the network stats go. So I believe that does it for me. Yeah, appreciate it, Chris. Um, cool. So we're going to jump into some ecosystem news. And this is all from Q4. Um, obviously, we don't have time to go through like every single um, update that's happened this quarter. But these are kind of the main highlights that we'll touch on um, over the next few slides. So first of all, liquidity has been added to Enzyme as a new protocol. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar, Liquidity, it's a borrowing protocol built on Ethereum. It essentially allows users to draw 0% interest loans against ETH. Um, and instead of paying sort of like variable, you know, percent interest rates, you just pay a one-time fee uh, to borrow LUSD. Um, important to note here, you need to maintain a collateralization ratio of 110%. Um, and obviously the loans will be repaid in LUSD as well. Um, but I think this is quite an interesting new use case uh, for asset managers that want to borrow against ETH, um, particularly because most, well, pretty much every other option, um, you're going to get varying degrees of interest rates, uh, whereas this one is obviously 0%. So that's quite a cool feature. Um, and this is now available on our Ethereum deployment. Uh, for Polygon, we have now released Idle onto Polygon. It was available on Ethereum only, but we've expanded that uh, to the Polygon deployment. Um, if you're not familiar, Idle is a decentralized rebalancing protocol, which allows users to automatically and algorithmically manage uh, their digital asset allocation among uh, different third-party DeFi protocols. Bit of a mouthful, but I think you get the gist. Um, the idle on polygon integration includes the following best yield assets which is idle die idle weth and idle usdc um so you're going to continue to see us throughout the rest of uh well this year is nearly over but throughout 2023 uh, continue to build out new features and integrations across both our ethereum and polygon deployment and like chris mentioned i think polygon does have a, a massive opportunity for growth for us um you know when you're creating a vault it, you know, it's a thousand times cheaper than creating a vault on Ethereum. Uh, transaction speeds are faster, trading fees are cheaper, et cetera. So, you know, for the more sort of retail user, I think Polygon is definitely um, a pretty cool option that we now offer on Enzyme. Um, I think Luca mentioned this a little bit earlier that Fee Splitter is a new feature that we've released. Uh, so this is an avant-garde feature that we've released for Enzyme. Um, like Luca mentioned, you can now split fees among several different wallets. 
Uh, and this can be used for basically all of the different fees on Enzyme. Uh, that includes management fees, performance fees, entrance fees, and exit fees, uh, which opens up, I guess, a variety of different use cases. Uh, we've highlighted a few of them here. Um, so let's say for shared asset management, if you you know, share asset management efforts with another DeFi strategist, uh, then you can use the fee splitter to you know, split fees with them kind of as you see fit. Uh, if you use, say, a delegated person to onboard new depositors via a commercial partnership, uh, you can use the split fitter, fee splitter uh, to agree a reward based on you know, AUM or future performance of that vault. Um, and for distribution network, let's say you, know, you have a, a network of allocators or distributors that are cooperating in the success uh, of your DeFi strategy then you can also use the fee splitter to kind of like systemize that fee distribution and make sure that it's customized to your needs. Um, so again, I think this is a nice feature that we offer kind of really customizing uh, the vault manager experience and making sure you guys have as many options as possible um, without sacrificing you know, the trust assumptions um, and making sure that your vault is essentially as safe as possible um, and according to the rules that you set. Uh, another cool feature that we've launched is delegated voting. So in previous uh, versions of Enzyme, if you held governance tokens, you it was a bit of an opportunity cost in the sense that you couldn't put those uh, tokens to work in terms of their voting power. Um, but with this new feature, you can now delegate uh, tokens to any wallet address that you want. Um, initially, this feature supports Aave, Compound, and Uniswap but we plan to kind of increase that in the future to several different uh, protocols. Um, here, it's worth noting that Avant-Garde maintains an active presence uh, in all three of these protocols, to be honest. Um, so if you hold these tokens and you're not currently delegating them, uh, you can delegate them to gov.avantgarde.eth. Um, and we, uh, yeah, we'll definitely put those to work for you um, if you're interested in doing that. And I think this takes us on to our new user rep. So um, just a quick background context, I guess, on, on the Enzyme user rep. So we held elections earlier this year, I think from September through to October. Um, the community has now voted for Chris and David to become uh, the new user reps. The, the way the kind of Enzyme Council is structured, so you have the Enzyme Technical Council, which consists of of the core members of the team that make you know voting decisions etc um, on protocol up, updates and upgrades and things like that uh, the user reps are more geared towards making sure that your voice is heard from the community so if you guys have any you know thoughts on how you can improve the protocol any suggestions uh, you can contact chris and david they're sort of your first line um, contact to the council uh, but i figured it would be kind of useful now just to have a quick introduction from each of you guys, if you don't mind, just to find out a little bit more about, um, you know, how you found Enzyme, how you've used the platform before, and kind of what you guys are doing, I guess, in the wider crypto space. Um, so, Chris, maybe do you want to start? Sure. Um, I've been using Enzyme since it was Melon, um, since B1. Uh, big fan of Mona, Avant Garde, and, you know, Enzyme protocol. Um, we at the Human DAO passed the proposal to put, you know, some of our treasury into an enzyme vault to put it to work for, you know, DeFi farming and, and stuff like that. So, um, you know, we we have uh, skin in the game, and you know, we we have we have a great outlook for you know enzyme moving forward. And you know, like I said before, I think Polygon holds a lot of opportunities um, to grow the protocol. You know, to get more to get more word out uh, about enzyme because you know it is cheaper and easier to spin up so you know trading contests all kinds of stuff could be utilized on the polygon chain that aren't feasible on on uh, ethereum but yeah so i'm very happy you know i was elected thank you guys you know, who voted and um, i hope i can contribute and help enzyme grow thanks awesome and David, I know you're heavily involved in the crypto space as well. So tell us a little, a little bit about your background. Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm David. Um, 
my background is in uh, hedge funds. Um, I was a, a partner with a UK based commodity fund for eight years. Um, and then I, I slowly pivoted to crypto um, around about 2016 uh, and getting much more deeply involved uh, in the last two and a half years. Um, I discovered Enzyme actually quite recently, um, uh, towards the start of this year, um, as I was exploring options uh, to launch our, our crypto fund at Insight. Um, and I just very quickly fell in love with the, the concept and, and the platform. Um, having spent you know, a fair amount of time um, managing offshore investment funds, um, there's a huge number of costly inefficiencies, essentially, that, that I think blockchain um, can completely solve. Um, so from that perspective, I think it's greatly needed. Um, and I'm a big supporter of, uh, of the Enzyme project and everything that's happening here. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, yeah. So like I mentioned at the start, guys, if you have any feedback or questions, uh, do get in touch with Chris. And David, we've created a Discord channel uh, specifically for the user reps, so you can drop in any uh, thoughts into that channel um, directly. Uh, cool. And like Luca mentioned, so we just as of last week, I think, announced that Kiln, uh, Kiln's ETH staking has now come to Enzyme, uh, which is pretty exciting. Uh, so this integration essentially gives asset managers uh, a human readable way uh, to access Kiln's enterprise-grade ETH staking, and you can earn up to 15% rewards. Uh, do note that those rewards are variable, so you're not guaranteed to make 15%, but it is possible um, on their platform. And there's several benefits, I guess, depending on what type of user you are um, and what use case you're looking for. But if you're, if you're a DAO, let's say, uh, you can use Kiln's ETH staking to put your treasury to work. Um, for you know asset managers and vault managers, it's a great way to sort of diversify and earn additional yield, um, and yeah, bring new opportunities to kind of generate that safe yield um, that you're looking for. So definitely check this out. I think on the day of launch, we had one asset manager stake uh, 96 ETH. Um, so yeah, it's already being used, and um, I'm sure more uh, vault managers will continue to use Kiln. Um, if you want to find out more information about this integration specifically, uh, you can look up the Enzyme Medium page. If you just go on Google and type in Enzyme Finance Medium, uh, you can pull that up. We've launched a blog post specifically about this integration. Uh, it covers all the kind of background context, everything you need to know about Kiln, um, as well as a sort of a step-by-step -step process of how you actually go about uh, staking ETH um, on Kiln via Enzyme. So definitely check that out. Um, and now we're going to hand over briefly to Guillaume, who is going to talk about the working in progress uh, referral program at Enzyme. So Guillaume, uh, why don't you introduce yourself first and, and talk us through uh, what you've been working on? All right. Thanks, Connor. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Guillaume, uh, member of the community, also a longtime fan of Enzyme, also a big fan of Kiln. So I think this is really great, this uh, partnership for the staking part. Yeah, I reached out to the to the team a couple of months ago and uh, yeah, looking at ways to contribute to the success of the protocol. And now I focus on implementing an affiliate and or a referral program. So why why now? Uh, such a great platform. You just heard all the all the benefits, all the new uh, features of the of the product. So it's I guess more than ready to onboard more users and keep growing and have uh, yeah more growth in the in TDL as well. So on this slide at the top, you can see the, the few uh, governance steps until approval uh, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, basically the main takeaways, and this is what Connor just said, it, this is work in progress. So it means uh, all the community, you all have the possibility to give feedback. And here we're starting with uh, looking at referral programs. First, they're usually simpler to implement than an affiliate program. So the first one here, program one, uh, what we have in mind, this is uh, yeah, quite straightforward. You help onboard the new vault manager to Enzyme, you get rewarded. And uh, yeah, basically you've got 
ideas or questions around that, you can reach out to Luca, to myself, or to the uh, user reps. So that would be that would be the first one we're, we're looking at. And the second one, this is interesting because yeah, this is also based on some inputs we we got from existing manager, for example. And how does it work? Uh, as a vote manager, you'd be able to incentivize your investors in your own vote to onboard new depositors. So we're still collecting feedback to validate this second approach. So there's some discussion. And this is actually uh, the, the goal of this QR code on the, on the, on the left side. Um, there behind, behind the, the QR code is a link to a questionnaire. We're collecting feedback and yeah, asked a few questions around mostly this uh, second referral program. So yeah, again, main takeaways, looking at referral programs and enzyme, work in progress, but it's coming. We have, we aim to implement uh, within the next yeah couple of months. So we welcome feedback. And again, several ways to do it per email, Telegram to Luca. There's uh, all the proposals are on GitHub. So you can also comment below the proposals or please uh, use this QR code and uh, yeah, give us your feedback, uh, especially on the second program. That's awesome. it for me today. Yeah, happy holiday, holiday everyone. And yeah, handing over, handing back to, to Connor. Good luck. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, guys, definitely um, do scan that QR code and get involved. Uh, this is sort of the, the fundamentals of what it means to be a decentralized protocol. Um, so we always encourage you guys to get as involved as you possibly can. Um, so definitely check that out. And now I'm going to hand over to David to talk a little bit about uh, tokenomics. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, a quick summary uh, of the uh, MLN tokenomics. So MLN is the token underpinning the Enzyme platform. Uh, as Connor, uh, sorry, Chris, excuse me, mentioned, um, since March of this year, the protocol charges a, an annualized fee uh, based on the AUM in the vaults. So the, the default fee is 50 basis points per annum, but this is discounted by half to 25 basis points when it's paid in MLN. And at the end of each year, all of the fees collected uh, are burned by the council. Now this is significant because firstly, it creates a structural demand for MLN token. Secondly, the regular burning uh, creates a deflationary force uh, on the supply of MLN. Uh, and most importantly, the MLN token is now, is now structurally linked to the success and the growth of, of the Enzyme platform. Um, and so as AUM and users grow, that's going to transmit directly into, into value for, for MLN token um, and, and to the stakeholders there. On the flip side of the coin, there is a token inflation, um, which is capped uh, at 300,000 per year. And this is used to fund maintenance, development, uh, security, uh, marketing. All of the expenditure coming from here is approved by the Enzyme Council. Uh, and important to note is that this is all expenditure that contributes to growing and strengthening the platform. Um, just to give an idea, um, this year, I think 54,000, just over 54,000 uh, MLN tokens were burned. And that was excess tokens from, from the, the annual inflation that were, that were unused. In terms of the token burning, as I mentioned before, all of the protocol fees are burned at year end. The excess network fees uh, are also burned. Uh, and to date, we can see that over 380,000 MLN tokens out of a supply of just under 2.1 million have been burned. So that gives you a percentage of roughly 18% of the circulating supply that's already been burned. In terms of tracking the burn, uh, I think we have two links now. So you can see the most recent token burning um, 
on the screen now, you have the, the link to EFASCAN. Uh, and then I believe there is also a, a link to the graph uh, at the bottom of the screen here, um, where you can track the, the token burning and the accumulating, uh, the accumulating burn in, in real time. And with that, yeah, thank you. Over to you, Connor. Awesome. Thanks, David. Um, yeah. And likewise, guys, if you want to find out more information, because this is a topic we get asked about quite frequently, um, this uh, tokenomics blog that we've published, this one is actually on the avant-garde medium page. Um, actually, no, it's on the enzyme page. Sorry. Uh, have a read through this because we've kind of answered sort of the main questions that we get asked, um, cover basically everything that David just mentioned. Uh, so it's worth a read if you want to find out more about latest tokenomics. Um, and it also does have the links in there to the graph protocol. Um, so you can actually track in real time how many tokens have been burned, which is pretty cool. Um, cool. All right, Luca, do you want to walk through 2023 roadmap, the, the moment that everyone's been waiting for? Yeah, sure. This is like uh, exciting. Like we, we looked at the past, the recap of the year. Now it's time to look a bit about the future, uh, next few months. Um, so uh, definitely... Uh, we are looking to grow AUM uh, from those uh, use cases that we talked about earlier, uh, especially we see, I mean, we're really fo very focused on on, uh, on DAOs, DeFi, and more and more focused on traditional finance. Um, in terms of protocol integrations, uh, we already have uh, in the pipeline uh, Balancer, the integration with Balancer, Balancer pools, uh, also um, uh, manage, manage pools, uh, which could be a, a very interesting product. Uh, we have already users that are uh, kind of craving for that. Um, we have Compound V3 uh, in the works and also the ability to delegate uh, GRT tokens uh, from the graph. Uh, notional finance that will give uh, fixed rates, uh, fixed rates lending and uh, no risk lotteries with both pulled together is also some of the things we've been working on. Some of them have been already uh, worked in terms of integration or adapter at smart contract level uh, and are only uh, waiting for the, fi the final touches from the front end team. And some others will, uh, will have to be worked in the, in the, in the next months. Uh, our next audit uh, will probably be around March. So then we'll have uh, some more integration coming up uh, like in Q1 uh, next year. Um, derivatives are also some of the things we're looking at. Um, <clears throat> I think there was a question uh, that I saw earlier from Jans uh, in the in the chat about derivatives, and it's actually uh, interesting, interesting that he mentions uh, gains trade at one of the, the solutions that we're looking at uh, to integrate uh, possibly uh, perpetuals on chain. It's, it's a challenge to have them on mainnet. There is frankly no solutions for mainnet at, the, at this point, uh, but for Polygon, there could be this. And we're also exploring other possibilities. So uh, we're talking to uh, talking to several users, uh, managers, how they would use this and what they use what they, they would use it for. Um, so uh, very also also very happy to receive further feedback as we form uh, like a final idea of uh, the best the best next steps on, on this point. Uh, also working on a fiat on ramp. Uh, which will allow users to, to buy directly uh, crypto and have them delivered to their uh, MetaMask wallet uh, from uh, our interface. So this is coming up uh, very soon, I think. And uh, also looking at further down the line at our V5, which is going to be uh, called EVE. Uh, one of the things that has been requested a lot, and it's a clear use case, is the expansion of the asset universe beyond Chainlink. I think this is all one of the things that have been most requested. Uh, one clear use case would be DAOs that have high concentration in native uh, tokens. And of course, at this point, some of these tokens cannot be held on Enzyme because they're not supported by Chainlink. So this would solve that use case immediately and probably open up other opportunities uh, for different um, asset managers. Uh, also, including asset class asset classes like NFTs, real estate, uh, VC deals, uh, SAFTs, and, and more. So we see uh, we see these use cases like Web3 VCs coming up uh, or, or asset managers that want to diversify across uh, different asset classes, cre even create portfolios that have diversified asset classes so that you know, there's no correlation between uh, one position and the other. So really a full, diver di full diversification. And um, 
And then we're working on, of course, on, on, on the ability for people to either connect uh, to our protocol with APIs or even like build on top of it uh, through the use of uh, software development kits. Uh, so that's uh, something very important and, and we're having conversation on a daily also about this, this thing, uh, making it easier for other developers or partner pro pro uh, projects and protocols to be able to work on, on our code base. And a lot, like, frankly, a lot, a lot more things that uh, would make this list uh, very, very long. Uh, just rest assured that I'm having conversation on a daily basis with users. There's lots of requests. We have a, a pro internally, uh, we have a product discovery group and we're talking almost, an, well, actually we're talking on a weekly basis about these ideas and what we can put forward based on, on your input. So uh, please keep it coming. Uh, it's important. It matters to us, and it makes it uh, easier for us to 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 choose what's more important. Because the more requests we get, the more we understand that stuff is is really priority for you guys, and this is this is what we want. So yeah, excited about next year. Yeah, totally. Thanks, Luca. And I think we've we've just seen over the last few months with the FTX uh, fiasco, and and well, since the summer really, with you know Three Arrows Capital and Luna. Um, and all the sort of the trauma, for lack of a better word, that the industry's gone through, that there really is now, uh, there's no excuse to not use DeFi. And I think the technology that we've built um, at Enzyme and that we're building at Avant-Garde is just something that the industry kind of, you know, we need to move towards uh, more transparency, uh, more auditability. And, um, you know, we're confident that in 2023, uh, we will start to see more, you know, like Luca mentioned, institutional traction, um, but just more broadly across the ecosystem, I think uh, what we've built will uh, continue to pay dividends. So um, I'm going to open the floor up now, guys. So if you have any questions, uh, please do leave them in the chat. Uh, I believe we've had a few, so I'm going to pull them up now. Um, so Logan Jones has asked if the website app.enzyme.finance becomes unavailable uh, is there a way to directly redeem and withdraw to my wallet from an enzyme fund? And if so, uh, where can I find the directions for such? Um, that's a very good question. And I don't know the answer off the top of my head. Uh, Luca, do you know the answer to that? Well, absolutely. I mean, the, fun the funds can be can be redeemed. I mean, it's a smart contract wallet that is owned by the vault owner. So definitely, um, I mean, if the interface, user interface is not available, asset can always be redeemed. It's a bit hacky. Uh, so I think the best uh, the best way to do it would be to get in touch with the Avangard team. I mean, this is what we are there for, to help users. Uh, we have uh, we have a direct uh, 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 email for support, which is in, in fact support at uh, avangard.finance. So in this case, you can get in touch with uh, with with uh, with us through that email, through Telegram, through Discord, and definitely uh, very happy to help. For those that actually uh, understand like how smart contract work, they you know probably be able to do it without even without our help. So that's uh, you can. That, yeah, you can also interact with smart contracts through Etherscan. Yeah. yeah. So Indeed. Etherscan is another place you could do it at. Yeah. Okay, cool. So hopefully, guys, there, there's several ways you could do it in the extremely, you know, unlikely chance that that was the case. Um, but I'm sure if if there was ever a situation like that, we would make sure to inform you guys and let you know all the options that you have. Um, we've got an anonymous attendee that has asked, are you looking towards real world assets in 2023 as other asset types? Uh, I'm going to let Luca take this one because he's had several conversations with uh, prospects that are interested in real world assets. So Luca, take it away. I mean, uh, we, we already have like, in terms of our RWA, we have options like, uh, you know, like, like, uh, Goldfinch and, and Maple Finance, but, uh, then we're looking also to possibly satisfy other other types of use cases. Um, so, I mean, our, our RWA is, is quite a broad categorization. So within that, there's different, uh, different uh, even I say the different assets, the different typologies. So um, definitely it's something that, it, that is requested. So uh, the more popular request becomes, the more we pay attention to it and try to scan the, 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 the possible solutions and assess them. Um, so uh, very happy to take uh, to take on your input or more specific uh, requests and, uh, and and try to work it out. Yeah, for sure. 
Um, we've got another question from Ricardo who says, how can you deal with the prices for non-chain link Oracle assets in the e-version, uh, including NFTs and off-chain assets like real estate? Uh, that's a very good question. And, and I think that's one of the main uh, challenges with that. Um, Luca, do you want to jump in on this? Yeah, I mean, if this is more like, um, this is like something we're researching, but like in the end, like it's, uh, I think like the idea is to make it more flexible to for vault managers to pick their own uh, price sources. Um, and therefore, because um, one of the issues today is that when, when an asset becomes available, uh, it is then available to everyone in the community. So every vault can potentially invest in them. This is why uh, we have, one of the re main reason we have a chain link because it's the most robust and most secure infrastructure for price oracles. And moving forward and becoming more flexible means that every vault owner will have the ability to say, pick and choose which asset they want to whitelist for their own vault and, and choosing the, the, the sources of those prices uh, on, a, on an individual basis. So at least this, this is high, high level. Then how we go about every single case, then it's something that we'll have to figure out a bit more in detail as we work through this uh, type of solutions. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy Larson has asked a question. He says, I'm a vault manager. Our vault is denominated in Route Bitcoin. However, our users see USD denomination on the overview page. Uh, with no option to view performance against Bitcoin, which is our focus. Do you plan to add performance over time in the denominated token or even NAV to the overview page? Um, yeah, no, this is, uh, again, this is uh, one of the things that have been requested by several users. Um, uh, indeed, um, I mean, people can always toggle uh, onto, you, onto uh, BTC benchmarking. But I understand that uh, it's 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 only natural if it, that uh, the default not denomination is uh, the one that is you know attached to your vault. So I think we're we're this is captured as a as a specification or as a, as a request, and uh, I think this will be solved through the use of the white label more than than the use of our like standard user interface. So in the future. Uh, hopefully near future, it will be possible th through the creation of the white label and that the white label will give you the option to uh, set a different uh, default denomination. Uh, so basically uh, speaking practically, uh, when you load the page of your vaults, the default denomination will be uh, BTC. So you have that um, instead, of, uh, instead of USD. Yeah, and to be clear for Jeremy, I mean, there is a toggle at the top that lets you switch to ETH, Bitcoin, USD. So mm -hmm. you can, you know, tell people to toggle that and then it does track the BTC performance on the overview, on your overview page. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. just a, a small manual step, but Jeremy, hopefully that answers your question um, and definitely let your uh, depositors know. Uh, George asks a question, do you help with the KYC process for institutional managers? Uh, the answer to that would be, yes, we can definitely help you guys. Um, Luca would be your, your go-to man for any questions around uh, institutional uh, investment into Enzyme. Um, depends on the specific requirements that you have, but I'm sure we're, uh, we're more than willing to help in any way uh, that we can. Yeah, absolutely. I think in this for for we are already doing it for some vaults and um and if we get more and more requests about this i think and the, the the solution will be to have a more uh a more proper uh, integration that that allows any managers to do it uh, if they want to of course because this will be um i think like uh, connor touched upon this and i think it's important to make a conceptual distinction between like the the standard uh, enzyme features and the avant-garde uh, the power by avant-garde feature which are like more like premium solutions on top of the uh, existing enzyme out of the box. Cool. So George, hopefully that answers your question. Uh, Jose Maria asks, uh, plans to integrate a crypto tax software. Uh, so we do work with uh, Cryptio, which can do your accounting uh, and kind of like back end office for you. Um, so you can, uh, yeah, use that solution, um, as a plug and play, if you're looking to have help with, uh, with tax. Um, so definitely check that out. 
yeah, I think crypto gives uh, the ability. Uh, crypto is a, is a I think of crypto as a middleware between Web three and Web two. So this would give you the ability to have like further metadata attached to your transaction. So have further labeling, and also download CSV reports uh, of all your activity log, um, which will then be uh, the um, so and, and that output can be then used as an input for other Web2 solutions like QuickBooks or other softwares that can then compute your capital gains or you know your income or whatever and and, and calculate uh, your your tax uh, obligations. Another idea, since a lot of crypto tax websites don't have the, the, the full enzyme integration is just to you know, upload your vault address um, into yeah. the, the software. So that's that's another thing that is nice to use. Yep. Yeah, totally. Um, any more questions, guys? We'll give it another like 10, 15 seconds. Uh, do ask away. Oh, right on cue. Uh, Jans has asked, why have you not implemented any perpetual integrations? I think that's, that's yeah, the same question we asked earlier. So I think we've answered that. Um, cool. All right, guys, if you don't have any uh, other maybe like, um, uh, so I would like to make the point also because he, he's, he's, uh, Jans is asking, are there any risks that are arise from the safety? So I think I would like to make the point here, which is, uh, very important. Um, uh, so it, it, so the question is about the use case, which I, I think I answered already. Uh, but in terms of safety, I think it's important to highlight the fact that, uh, our protocol and te uh, protocol team does extensive research uh, about all the integrations that we're about to or co even considering to include. And, and that research process includes analyzing all the possible risk vectors that are associated with that integration. Uh, so re really thinking hard and long about what could go, everything, every possible scenario that could go wrong. Uh, so this is extremely important for us because security is our number one concern. Once we're satisfied and comfortable, uh, with uh, with the idea of those integration, then we go and and really develop the adapters and audit them, and then uh, finally deploy. Cool. Uh, we've got another question: Is there interest to have vaults that can hold assets within different networks, aka ETH and Polygon, in order to access the full suite of assets and protocols? Uh, I believe that would not be possible because they are both. Uh, any assets held on mainnet would not uh, would be different than Polygon. Is that correct, Luca? Yeah, like the yeah, indeed. I think like the separation between uh, Ethereum and Polygon Vault is is, is important because uh, the moment like the cross chain, uh, the cross chain value uh, transfers are the most vulnerable parts. Uh, so that's definitely something not possible at the moment. Um, but yeah, I mean. Uh, again, like if this request, uh, this, if this request come like more and more often, then uh, we can start doing like uh, considering what what options we will have. Cool. Uh, Ricardo has one more question. Are you considering the option to add additional costs to the vault and track it transparently? Uh, Ricardo, I'm not sure entirely what costs to the vault you're referring to, whether you're talking about uh more additional fees um maybe you can confirm okay for example a financial regulator adds some taxes that the fund itself needs to pay um i guess this gets a little bit tricky so that you know if anything is off chain um you know that might be difficult for the protocol to track um yeah. yeah, I think this, this uh, Ricardo, I think this is, I think I know where you're coming from. And I think, yeah, this is something that uh, I guess we can discuss uh, uh, with you. Uh, so some of some of the, uh, uh, like, fu functionally speaking, it's not so easy. But, um, but then uh, we can, I guess we can try and find some, uh, some solutions and discuss at least how to best represent it. <clears throat> yeah, you're not able to adjust the fees, right? Once it's launched is that mm -hmm. that's the well, well you, you you can adjust yeah, fees can be adjusted i mean like it's one of the configuration that or the settings can that can be changed uh and you have to go through a reconfiguration process if you want to do that uh and that will take seven days by the way a sort of seven day cool off period before they get they get implemented and this is actually the reason why we have this seven day is because 
if the manager uh, makes uh, a change that is not agreeable for, for like for the depositors, then this is a way for the depositors to get out and redeem their assets before it actually goes into in, into in force, basically. So this is a way that you could add those additional costs by increasing the fee or um, you know something along those lines. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right, guys, we're we're nearly out of time. So I think we're going to wrap up Q&A, but appreciate all your great questions. Um, if you do have any more questions for us, you can reach us at info at avantgarde.finance. I think um, we've got a few places you can get in touch with us here. Uh, for like specific requests related to the Enzyme protocol, any kind of you know features you'd like to see added, et cetera, you can submit them um, on our canny. Uh, application. You can view the URL there at the top of the screen. Um, and you can also track actually in real time what we have uh, currently planned, what's in progress, and what we've completed. Um, and then, like I mentioned earlier, if you want to get in touch with Chris and David directly, uh, best place to do that would be on Discord uh, in the Enzyme User Reps uh, channel. Um, we will monitor that. So take advantage of that. Um, and that just leaves me to say thank you very much for attending. I hope you guys have a very happy holiday season and a great new year. Um, as always, if you want to keep in touch with us, uh, follow us on Twitter. Uh, our Telegram link is there as well. We're pretty active on Telegram. So um, any questions you may have, we'll answer those pretty quickly. And Discord, like I mentioned, great place to keep in touch. Um, and I, I will just mention that uh, every month on the last calendar day of the month, we send out a newsletter for the Enzyme ecosystem. So if you want to stay on top of kind of like monthly updates of the main um, initiatives that we've been working on, whether it's integrations, uh, new features, et cetera, um, definitely sign up to our newsletter and you can have all that information there. Um, so yeah, really appreciate it, guys. On behalf of the rest of the panel here as well, uh, wishing you all a very happy holiday season. Thanks, guys.